In 1792 there was enthusiasm to build the canal from Leicester to Northampton. This would link the Derbyshire and Nottingham coalfields to London. By 1795 the first section of the canal was completed, but due to financial difficulties work had come to a halt at Debdale. The original plan had been to take the canal through Foxton, Market Harbour and on to Northampton. Work was resumed in 1803 but soon costs rose to such an extent that it was proposed the line should finish at Market Harbour and this section was formally opened in October 1809. The Grand Junction Company became interested in completing the link to the Grand Junction Canal and in 1808 they looked at plans previously put forward by the renowned canal engineers James Barnes and Thomas Telford. Telford suggested taking the canal on through Market Harbour and crossing the Welland Valley by an aqueduct. It would then continue through East Farndon, Oxenden and Arthingworth, where a six mile branch line would split off to Rushton. The main line would continue through Cottersbrook and Holdenby to join the Grand Junction Canal at Buckby Wharf. Barnes rejected this as too expensive and proposed building the canal as level as possible from Foxton along the Lawton Hills through Husbands, Bosworth, Yelvertoft, Crick, Watford and joining the Grand Junction at Norton. He also proposed that the harbour section would in effect become a branch of the main canal. They decided that the Barnes proposal was the most favourable. 200 years ago when they were considering building the canal here um, they had options. They could have built a tunnel to our left that would have been one of the longest canal tunnels in the country at the time. Uh, a lot of hard work and it would have gone through into the Welland Valley. But Benjamin Bevan, the engineer, came up with a plan to lift the canal at this spot by 75 feet, take it 20 miles to the south to Watford, back down the hill uh, by another seven locks and join up with the Grand Junction Canal. It's a good climb up this hill and at the very top it's the third highest piece of canal in Britain. Not a lot of hills above it to supply water. That's why they decided to have narrow locks instead of wide. By June 1812 the canal from the top of the locks to Husband's Bosworth Cutting was open. A distance of about five miles and by the 1st of October 1812 Foxton Locks was finished. The new cut was constructed level following the contours of the Lawton Hills and thus required no locks. The two proposed tunnels at Husbands, Bosworth and Crick were necessary to maintain the level. The pound is 20 miles in length and is one of the longest stretches of level navigation in the whole canal system. As we enter Bosworth Tunnel, it's interesting to note that the canal from Foxen to here was opened by June 1812, a distance of about five miles. The tunnel length, when finished, was 1,170 yards long, about 1,070 metres. The bright hues of the brickwork reflect the local red clays from which the bricks were made. Bricks were imported by canal boat probably from Market Harbour as well as being made at Foxton. It's estimated that from 1811 some 350 men were working on the project. Eight shafts were used during its construction and the brickwork was completed on the 29th of April 1813. 
Despite this, the tunnel has no ventilation shafts. The work on the tunnel experienced some problems as efforts were made to clear water from the middle three working shafts. Eventually, a steam engine had to be purchased to pump the water out. The tunnel lies beneath the Market Harbour to Rugby railway line, closed in 1966. The railway is in turn crossed by a bridge by the boat horse path where the horses were walked while the boatman legged the boat through the tunnel. The canal bypasses the village of Husbands Bosworth after which the tunnel was named. Bridge 42 is a roving bridge to take the canal towpath over to the Welford Arm. The Welford Arm was created to provide a source of water to maintain the water levels in the canal and three reservoirs are to be found near Welford. While the main canal continues on its way to Norton, over 15 miles away, we shall travel up the Welford Arm a one and three quarter mile journey. There are three bridges on the arm, the last being a relatively new footbridge which replaced an old brick bridge. The nearby Welford lock raises the canal to the short pound into Welford Wharf and the marina. The Wharf Inn, formerly the George Inn, marks the end of the arm. Across the road and up the hill lies one of three reservoirs, Welford, Naseby and Sulby, which feed the canal. When water is needed, a paddle gate is opened and water gushes down the hill into the arm and ultimately into the main canal. Benjamin Bevan, the chief engineer, found quicksands and other poor strata on the line of the proposed tunnel at Crick. This caused the original line to be abandoned and a revised route ran to the east of the village. Unfortunately a tragedy occurred when a man was killed by a fall down a shaft which also had the effect of delaying the work on the tunnel. The tunnel was finally completed in July 1814. It was 1,528 yards long, about 1,400 metres, and because of the dripping water is known as a wet tunnel. Some say the Crick Tunnel is haunted. The dripping <laughs> roof and walls combined with the darkness certainly gives it a spooky feel. Although Walter Gubbins, who legged it through the tunnel many times, is scornful of such stories. <laughs> <laughs>